Hello, Morim here. Today with an update video for my S-tier Archmage build for Enshrouded. The newest patch just dropped and crushed a few things that made this build OP. Namely, the Ring of Infinite Mana and my beloved Acid Carpet are just that. The glitches and animation cancels are also fixed now, or at the very least are very hard to execute. This leaves us with a severely weakened mage archetype, but is it as bad as it sounds? Or are we just looking at a more group focused build? Well, given the new dungeons are being balanced around full groups of people, I imagine this is how we are supposed to play it. Solo is just tougher, but it still works if you play your cards right. Where this one truly shines now is group play. Now, the main spells you want to use are Fireball for DPS, Frostbolt for kiting groups of enemies and helping out your group mates, and Meteors as well as Channel Lightning to nuke enemies. We also have healing spells to keep our party fighting, and we also have a Light Nova to push back waves of enemies if we need a little bit of briefing room. The Acid Carpet, however, is completely dead. It has an insanely long cast time, costs a ton of mana, and deals absolutely no damage. Like, near zero. They absolutely dunked this skill. It's so bad, I am convinced it's bugged at this point. Like I said, this build is still, despite all the nerfs, still great to play. Especially when you start to use your environment to your advantage, to prevent enemies from reaching you. The cast times of spells are pretty long, so in solo play you need to do this. Flyers are still no problem, so is that bombers get wrecked before they can reach you, and we can also take one or two hits because of our armor choices. However, we are squishier than before. The nerfed water aura is hurting us quite a bit in terms of healing capabilities, but we are looking at other means to fix this, specifically in the skill choices in the skill tree. This will also provide our group with tons of mana, health and stamina orbs that they can pick up. Now, if you like what I do and want to support me, make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe if you have not already. I cover all sorts of RPG, speed strategy, C or ARPG on this channel in the form of extensive guides. So thank you very much for the support and let's dive into the meat. First, let's have a look at the attributes for this build and how to progress this character. Intelligence is our main stat, providing us with damage, but we are also increasing our healing capabilities with this one. As before, it scales multiplicatively with all damage increases in the tree, so we want as much as possible. Possible. Next is Constitution, which increases our health pool by 50 per point. This is crucial to our survival, so we want to pick up as much as possible. Aim for around 10 or more with food to get a decent life pool going. And lastly, given we are now using plus 2 mana gear, we don't need to pick up spirit around the tree and can focus on other picks. As a note, you have 114 points at your disposal to distribute in the skill tree. As always, especially now, let's start with the equipment. We're going to take a look at the rings, because currently we are going to use the ring of mana. I prefer to have two of them on my character, but the Ring of Ancients also works now, so it gives you plus one to intelligence, endurance, spirit, and so on and so forth, so this one works. It is a great ring, but given the mana issues we have, I prefer the Ring of Mana two times on this character. In my inventory, I currently only have a plus one Ring of Mana, those are quite rare. When you look at the map, you will see four zones, so we have one down here, one up here, and so on and so forth. Those dictate how well this ring can roll. So if you're going to farm this ring, try to go to the highest zone you can and loot just chests. It can be quite tedious to get this one, but if you do, you will be happy to have it. So at the very least, we get plus eight to our mana regeneration and a ton of mana with this one. If you are struggling with health, go with the Ring of Endless Life. This one has a plus six percent chance to life leech on any hit, meaning 100% of the damage is going to be leeched at a 6% chance. So if you throw a fireball and it deals 1200 damage, it's going to have a 6% chance to leech 1200 health. For our boots, we're going to use the Ella boots or any boots that have high mana regeneration and mana regeneration delay. This is now very important for the build because we do not have the Ring of Rhapsody. It's completely gutted. When we look at the ring now, it's just really bad. Minus 40 mana, just three mana regeneration. It is entirely not worth it to pick this ring. It is just so bad. For trousers, pick up the best trousers you can, meaning high magic resistance, as much mana regeneration as possible, and mana plus. For the gloves, go with the Elder Gloves. Those provide you with plus 12 magic damage. This works on spells and wands. The damage against magical foes now also seems to work, at least in my testing. So those gloves provide you with plus 21% damage. For the chest plate, I want to use the soldier chest plate. The explanation is simple. We need physical resistance. If we go with the mage chest, we are going to have only 120 to 150 physical resistance. This is not enough to survive hits. You will be completely crushed and extremely squishy. You need to be able to take a hit. And the soldier chest plate provides you with just that. More stamina, more health, and we don't need the 
mana we get from the mage chest. For the head, the archmage head or the elder helmet, both of which have the same stats, so pick a poison and pick whatever looks better. Now let's go over the staff. The staff is a little bit, um, how do I put it? Interesting. You want a staff with mana leech on hit. The mana leech on hit works on all spells. This means whenever you use your fireball and the mana leech procs, you get a bunch of mana back. This helps with your mana sustain. You don't necessarily need it, but you can spam more spells. If, however, you have a legacy version of the Shroud Weaver, it is considered better. You deal much more damage. I'm not talking about like 10% more. I'm talking about like 50% more damage with the Shroud Weaver at level 35. The base damage in this game is insane in terms of scaling. If you have the Shroud Weaver in the legacy version, pick it. If you do not have it and have mana issues, go with a staff that has mana leech on hit. And for the shield, I prefer the shield of light, but you can go with the ethereal shield. Like this one, for example, it provides you with shroud resistance and a little bit less parry power, but the shroud resistance comes in very handy later on. We have, however, a lot of magic resistance already, so I prefer the other block shield because we can block and parry with this one, just like that. Next, let's go over the spells. For a bread and butter spell, we're going to use Eternal Fireball. It has a lengthy charge up time, but we can get it off if we jump back from an enemy, like so, and then charge it in mid-air, so we can shoot it while they are attacking us. The AoE is pretty big, as you can see here. They now have this neat little effect. So it's a great spell versus a lot of enemies. Next, the Eternal Ice Bond. This one doesn't deal as much damage as the Fireborn, but it now creates a patch of ice on the ground that slows enemies. So you can use this one because it has a very, very short charge up time, then run back a little bit and charge up your Fireborn to hit them. It is really, really nice to use. So this combo is your bread and butter combo now. You weave in both of those. So next is the eternal light spell, the light burst. So as you can see, here's a flyer. Those are very, very much not resistant to it. They get stunned. So flyers get stunned by the spell. It is amazing versus them. You can basically stun lock them and they can never move if you do it right. Uh, they also buff the feathers you obtain from those. You always obtain five. So it is for 50 arrows. Very, very neat. But the spell is really good versus flyers. It is really good versus groups of enemies. However, the range sucks. Technically, the range is only around that wide. So this rock would be hit, this one wouldn't be. Another benefit of the spell now is you are in melee range and we are using those orbs that spawn. So if you pick those up, you will be healed, you will recover mana, you will recover stamina. So a pretty neat spell to use. The next two spells are basically boss nukers and something you use for specific enemies that are very tough to deal with otherwise. They can only be farmed in specific chests. So for example, here is a chest that you can farm. It still works, but if you run out of those spells, it's very tedious to craft them and I would not consider it to be worth it. We now have a lot of enemies in here. We use our short meteor, nuke them, deals a ton of damage. Pretty good AOE spell. It works pretty damn well, especially versus bosses that have a lot of ads. So that's something you need to consider. For the lightning channel, this one is very good versus the ghost flyer enemies. It deals an obscene amount of damage, but it takes a lot of charges to use. You also have your heal spells, one in channel heal and one in the chain. So those two heals are provided to you. My character is currently bugged and I cannot obtain the spells, so I cannot showcase them in the infinite form, but they basically the same. One is great for group healing, one is great for single target healing. So the next chapter is going to be about wands and what you want to use. In the end game, you will be able to obtain the helix wand. It provides you with a ton of shroud damage and most importantly, down here, the overcharge ability and the duplication ability. So there is a 50% chance to spontaneously create an additional projectile. This stacks with the wand master. So you can technically spawn three projectiles dealing a ton of damage. So when we shoot our projectiles, you will see there is a ton of duplication going on. You can technically spawn free, like here, but that's very, very rare. So that's the best DPS wand. Next, we have the Frozen Core wand for frost damage. It doesn't deal much damage, and I wouldn't advise using it in the endgame. The Helix wand is just better, and you have a Shock wand like the Ritual Tempest wand with a lot of shock damage that deals basically the same effectiveness on damage than 
the frozen core wand. The only benefit of the frozen core wand is it has mana leech. So if you want to recover mana, you switch to the frozen core wand. Otherwise, go use the shock wand if you must. It is very good versus all flies in the game. And then you have the luminous wand. This one falls off technically because the ritual wand and the helix wand, so the shroud damage wand and the shock damage wand, out damage it in the end game because a lot of enemies have vulnerabilities versus those damage types. And fire is basically only here to substitute this one. But if you find a nice one with a lot of fire damage, you can use it. So just to show all wands, you have the helix wand, you have the frozen core wand, you have the ritual tempest wand, and you have the luminous wand. All of those wands can be farmed in this specific spot, as well as from this specific enemy, there is a boss, a flyer enemy right here, the grim, bottom right corner of the map. Now let's go over the skill tree. We're going to start down below here at the tank with constitution, shiny plates, evasion attack, battle heal, spirit, bloodletting, life burst and blood magic. Those will basically fix all our mana issues regardless of the game stage. You don't actually need mana region with this one because the blood magic ability specifically says after dropping below 20% mana, you will restore 20% of your maximum mana per cost of health. Then you have life burst to heal back up. So when you kill something, you heal for a ton of life. And then you have bloodletting to spawn all of those health, mana and stamina orbs. On average, you get per mob two to three mana, health and stamina orbs. Those recover after you gather them 10% of the respective resource. So a really nice thing for group play and for yourself. Next, we pick up Arcane Deflection. Then we go to pick up Blink as well as Emergency Blink to get a Jail out of free card for stunts. We pick up Intelligence, Unity, Wand Master and Sting. This will provide us with more mana recovery as well as more damage with our wand, especially in the early game. That's really nice. Then we pick up Healer as well as Healer 2, Intelligence, Water Aura and Waters of Life if you're in group play. Now, that's something you need to consider. At the start of the game, you basically have no intelligence. So this one will heal for basically nothing. You can completely skip this one if you prefer something else. You don't need to pick up Water Aura anymore. It's really weak and it's just for the lazy ones if you want to regenerate your health in other ways. If you do not want this one, you can pick up those points and put them in, for example, Mason and Miner. Those will provide you with a lot more quality of life. So once we're done with this side, we're going to pick up Spirit and Counter-Strike in the Trickster Tree, then Quick Charge, because 50% charge up time on our staff attacks is going to be huge. I'm telling you, this is the game changer note here. Before that, the mage feels a little bit slower. You need to use your wand a lot, but with this one, you can use your spells considerably more. Now, at this point, we do have a lot of damage already. What I like to pick up is runner as well as double jump here to get access to a lot more mobility, a lot more, well, repositioning tools, especially as a solo player. So you can jump up at roofs or on hard to reach places so you can kite enemies better. It is much more important than the damage because you will deal enough damage. Next, we pick up intelligence, be gone, intelligence and terror. Terror will provide you with a stun on enemies without any diminishing returns for four seconds on a critical hit with a spell. This is amazing and a must have on the build. And towards the end, we're going to pick up a lot of multipliers in form of this is the way for more magic damage, arsonist, pyromaniac for 20% and 10% additional fire damage. We pick up radiant armor and sun aura to get something against critters so those have a very low amount of health so when they run into your sun aura they get hit for like 30 damage and that's enough to get them to be pushed back and killed next we pick up thunder and lightning because those spells are our boss killers then we pick up wizard for additional crit strike chance and mass destruction for a tendril lightning tendril that's jumping from enemy to enemy to deal damage based on intelligence it's shock damage so that's also good and lastly we pick up dark arts and abyss for 10 and 20% more shroud damage because our shroud meteor is going to hit for a ton and we have our helix wand as our primary damage source with wands. So we want to boost the shroud damage. Alternatively, you can drop the radiant aura and sun aura and pick up more defensive skills right here with tower and warden as well as constitution and potentially earth aura if you stretch the points a little bit. But other than that, that's the build. Now we can further optimize this build for a variety of buffs and consumables. First, get your comfort up and running to not run out of stamina. Stamina is really important. Next, consume some juicy meat, early chunks of wolf meat, later on game meat, improving your health through constitution. Next up, use berries early to get access to health regen 
region, try them up to increase the duration. For your main stat, intelligence, use mushrooms of any kind. Later you will be able to craft soups which count as a liquid, enabling you to use vegetables for additional spirit. You don't necessarily need spirit, but it's nice to have. Consume elixirs for a hefty boost to damage, scrolls to increase it even further, and a variety of other options for light, more stamina, and of course healing through health potions, bandages and spells. We also want to pick up mana potions to sustain our massive hunger for magical resources. Spells cost a ton of mana and we don't have infinite mana anymore, so if we run out we need those mana potions. Those can be crafted in mass at the alchemist by simply using a ton of mushrooms, so make sure to plant them in order to sustain your addiction. Now the end game food for intelligence is actually pretty simple to craft and obtain. The spirit vegetable can be grown, the soup only demands of you a small sacrifice in resources and the constitution food also provides you with an additional point of int, but you can substitute it with grilled meat if it's too much of a hassle to craft. You easily get access to plus 5 stats as a mage. Now this sums up the video. If you liked what you saw, make sure to like, comment and subscribe if you have not already. You can also support me some more by joining the channel membership which will allow me to keep making videos. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye.